Yeah, good. Good to see you. Thank you. See you for the weekend. Yeah, we're lucky that we have no no further injuries, apart from the two long-term ones of Christian Benteke and Conor Wickham. So Wayne Hennessy has recovered from the kick he received playing for Ireland. So we have a clean bill of health. Timeline now on Benteke and no, I wouldn't want to do that. That would be something really for the medical department. And what I can say is that they, they both seem to be progressing quite well. And I've spoken uh, to Christian a, a couple of times, and he's feeling very confident and he, he's thinking he's ahead of schedule. But uh, what the schedule really is, who can say? Roy, just on the Chelsea win. Now you reflect on it, does it feel like a turning point? Does it feel like a, a season starting here moment? No, I don't think that there are season starting moments. You know, the season for me started uh, on the fifth game of the season. So I'd already, the Chelsea was my fourth one. So I, I really, I'm already four games, if you like, into what I consider my season with the club. And I think it's very important that we don't start trying to suggest that there are either watershed moments or, or moments of epiphany either. Basically, we have to work very hard on a daily basis to try and make ourselves into a better team and to produce the type of performances which I, I thought we, we produced on Saturday when we won a game against the, the champions of England, but we did it by, by playing well and, and deserving our victory. We've got to keep doing that for the games that, that come. Now, the win that comes like this. Wilfred Zahar's return yes. from the starting 11. A lot of fans, they, they will pin their hopes on, on his shoulders, his young shoulders. But what would your message to them be? Well, I think they've chosen a good man, there's no doubt. You know, he is a top class player and he has been a talisman for, for Crystal Palace and the, the team and the club in the past. And we, we, we wouldn't even want to deny that. But it's like everything else. I, I believe, like all, all coaches, I think that football is a team game. And much as though you need your top class players, your top class individuals, I think it's unfair to suggest that if we're going to get ourselves out of the trouble that we find ourselves in, it's got to be down to one man. We've got to make certain that we get the best out of him and support him in the best way we can. But I was delighted for him. I thought it was an ex exceptionally good performance especially given the circumstances of having been out for six weeks. So uh, I'm rather hoping that we'll get another, what is it, 30 performances like that from him going forward. You have managed some fantastic players in, in your managerial career. How, how good is Wilfred? How good do you think he can become? Well, I think he's good and I think he can become even better, but it's wrong. At the, it would be very wrong of me to start comparing him at the moment with other players I've worked with um, because I've worked with him basically for two weeks on the training field. It was two weeks before before the Chelsea game and another week now. So it's three weeks in training, a couple of sessions with, with, with England a long time ago when he was a, not the player he is today, and of course one match. So it would be wrong to make comparisons, but if you're asking me do I think he's a very good player with a great future and the ability to, to get even better than he is at the moment, I'd have to have a you know answer with a resounding yes, I do think that. It's Newcastle United next. What unique challenges will they pose, in, in particular in comparison to, to the game you've just had? Well, I think they're a good footballing team. I watched them play against Southampton. Um, they were every bit as good as I expected them to be from the glimpses I'd seen on television and from knowing that they, they were a well-organised team that have a clear idea of what they want to do with and without the ball. Um, playing at Newcastle is like coming here to Selhurst Park. It's a, a fanatical atmosphere. The support for the for the team is is as good as we benefit from here at Selhurst Park. So it's always a chore or a challenge when you go up to Newcastle, however well they're playing. But at the moment, I think they've had a very good start to the season. It's a deserved start because they play good football and we've got to be ready to try and give exactly the same performance on Saturday that we did last Saturday against Chelsea. Ryan, I must ask you, it's not been the best week for the Football Association. With regard to Martin Glenn and Greg Clark, do you believe, as a former FA employee, that they are the right men to, to lead the Football Association forward? I don't think it's fair to ask me the, the, the question. 
partly because I have worked with them and of course know the two men personally and secondly because we're talking about a, an affair which is being uh, really scrutinised at this moment in time and there's lots of people who are involved in that scrutiny and I don't think outside voices like mine will help the situation one bit. I trust that the matter will be resolved by the people who are in place to resolve it and I think any comments from me could be, can't be anything but unhelpful. Can I ask you about how much potential damage is done to the reputation of the company body for the association this week? <clears throat> well, once again, I don't think I'm in the best position to answer that, but I'm afraid that every time there is a situation where people are being asked to defend themselves in a situation like the one that they find themselves in, it's got to be regarded, of course, as damaging. But uh, how damaging and how draconian the, the measures to be taken are, that's a matter for somebody else. And I, I think certainly as a football coach with his mind 100% concentrated on Crystal Palace Football Club, the Premier League, and trying to stay in the Premier League, I sympathise, well, I, sympathize, I, I empathise with the people who are in this situation, of course, because I work with them and know them, but it's really not my business at all. Uh, that's no, that's the, the best I can do for him. Okay. Just more generally, not on this specific case, just generally, you've been a manager for many, many years. The word banter is always banded around. How, how fine a line is it, banter and causing offence? And how careful do people need to be? Well, you certainly need to be very careful, that's for sure. I'm not 100% on what the word banter really means, and uh, I think anything that is anything other than friendly and regarded by the person on the receiving end of the banter as something positive has, has got to be regarded as a negative in the world of football. But uh, as I say, I've never bothered to look up the dictionary term banter. I don't even know if the word exists in the Oxford English Dictionary. But I certainly agree with the suggestion that anything that is not friendly, that is not regarded by people as something that they want to hear or be involved in is something we should be trying to stamp out because team spirit and the, the way players interact with each other is very important to us coaches. Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Well, Nick? Um, going back to last Saturday's game, first of all, how pleasing was it, from your point of view, that your players gave a great performance? The kind of performance that perhaps they can build from. I know you're saying look, one victory, one swallow doesn't make a summer, but mm. having said that, because of the type of performance it was, can that lead to other things? Well, I think it should do. I mean, I think that they should be feeling much more confident about their ability to, to do the type of things that we're all agreeing we want to do in the training sessions because they've transferred that from the training field onto the pitch and they've shown that they can do it and what's more they've shown they can do it against the, the champions of England so I would like to think that they, they will be believing now that they, they can produce those performances and those performances will be performances which will help them climb up the table and whether it's bravery or just really being prepared to to show that you A, understand your role in the team and B, that you are confident that you can perform it. The fact that we've well, missed the, the previous game since the opening day of the season through injury, do you think as a result, because he wasn't part of those defeats, he perhaps had a more positive mentality and that helped spread to the rest of the team? I've not thought about that. I mean, it's an interesting theory. Uh, I, it's certainly not a theory you could you could dismiss out of hand, but um, he really is very very concerned with with the club and has been concerned for us even during the injury period. So I, I think he's fully been suffering even though he's not been the one on the field. But it's a it's an interesting point, and I I certainly couldn't gainsay you on it. Uh, and just one last thought. I mean, what, what are your observations about Rafa Benitez and the Newcastle? How do you feel Rafa is doing so far this season? But he's doing very well. I mean, he's obviously done well to almost save them when he came in as the sort of saviour at the end of a season. He, he stayed with the club and spent a whole season in the Championship honing the team, I would guess, and bringing them back up again as, as champions into the Premier League. And then they've had a great start. The fans there love him. The players obviously like and respect him. And 
when you watch the team play, you can see it's a team which has obviously had some work done on it, um, and they, they, they know what they're doing, the players. So for me as a, a fellow coach, I can only watch his teams play or watch this particular team play and say, you know, congratulations on a good job of work. Thank you. Emma, back. Well, football is about victories and defeats. It's a, it's a constant succession, really, of parties and funerals. That's what it is for us, and that, that's never going to change. Uh, you have to be careful to try and, as a coach or manager, even those things out a little bit and not allow people to think that every defeat actually is a some sort of funeral atmosphere. And every time you win, it's euphoria. We've got to get somewhere in between those two things. But of course, it's much nicer when you when you have a win. People spend a nicer weekend. They come into training with a smile on their face, looking forward to the work. And sometimes, you know, they when they don't have that victory behind them to put the smile on their faces, they they need lifting up. But I think an important part of any coach's work is to make certain that there is some sort of balance to the whole thing, and that we keep in mind that the the crucial factor which in my opinion is that unless you work hard at your game every day, unless you take it very seriously and you, you work hard to understand your role in the team, what the team expects from you, and you work to make certain you're ready to give that when you go onto the field, then there won't be good moments. There will be only bad moments. So uh, I think what the good moments sometimes help us to prove to the players is that your work is paying off. You said that you were surprised at how quickly the players here had adapted to your methods, but I wonder if you understand why that's the case. Is it because you've got good players here, or is it because they were aware of the situation they were in? We're a premiership team, so one would hope we've got good players here because, you know, you, your chances of doing well or surviving in the premiership without good players is as near nil as makes any difference. So, of course, I would like to think we've got good players here. The important thing is how those players interact with each other and whether the good players can turn themselves into a good team and whether any weaknesses that we do have can be covered up while exploiting the strengths that we, we obviously have. And that's that's the job, that's the job that I've been given to do, that's my role in the whole and uh, their role is to make certain they understand what we expect from them and go onto the field believing they're capable of doing it. Johan Kabai was a big fan's favourite when he was at Newcastle. I'm wondering if you think you're starting to see the best of him again here at Crystal Palace. Well, I'm seeing the best of him, uh, I think, at the moment. I don't know how much better he could have been at Newcastle than he's been in the games for me so far and in the training sessions because he, he's performing extremely well. But I can't make comparisons between his his career and his work at Crystal Palace and his work at the other clubs, I can only make the judgments on the on the four league games I've seen in the month of training. Okay. Thank you. That's the end of the broadcast section.